weekly live stream. Appreciate you all being here. Uh, Steve, Carl, the first time I've seen you here. Welcome aboard, Steve. Uh, if you are new, go ahead and type in uh, new and see, we'll see if we can acknowledge you. Harold B., how are you doing? Carrie Ellen Wilder, how are you doing, ma'am? Uh, yeah, this one's going to be pretty interesting. What, we're, what I'm going to be doing is, is taking a look at um, this book that uh, Vincent was reading and he had talked to me about. Um, it was about the monetary authority of Singapore uh, through the years, the history of it. And, and so there was um, a few chapters I found pretty interesting. And, and I want to share it with you. And before that, we're going to be taking a look at a few things that Bill Holter had to say from his recent interview and a few items from Gerald Salente's Trends Journal. So, again, appreciate you all being here. And um, we'll get this started in, in just a bit. Seymour Rivers, how are you doing? Um, yeah, a lot of interesting things also that went on in, in current events and, and the news. So we'll, we'll try and um, touch on those as well. Ernest Blackmore, how are you doing? Richard Martin, aloha, how are you doing? Um, and Richard, where are you from? Type in, I know I think I've seen you once or twice before, but I don't think I got where you were from. Uh, anyway, we'll go ahead and, and get it started in about uh, 30 seconds or so. I'll get a few more sips of coffee and, and then we'll go ahead and, and get started. So if you can, just let me know how the audio is coming in. And uh, hugs to everyone as well. I'll be with you shortly. Five, five. Thanks, I Appreciate it. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Silver Bullion Television, SBTV. I'm your host, Patrick Vieira. Thank you all for being here. Just want to sneak in a couple more. Um, let me see where to go. Uh, Bill Wood, okay, Tampa. And we had one more. I think it was um, YYC Guy, Calgary, Canada. I hope things are going well for you up there. So again, one and all, thank you for being here. Aloha. Welcome to our live stream. As always, you can catch us on social media. Silverbullion.com.sg is our website. We do sell precious metals. We do buy precious metals. We also store precious metals. And more than anything else, we do specialize in, <clears throat> excuse me, systemic wealth protection. And I know a lot of you already know what's going on. So contact us, sales at silverbullion.com.sg. We'll see what we can do. And as always, options. We're going to need options. And I'd say we have some pretty good options for you to so contact us. Silver Bullion SG is our Facebook handle. Silver Bullion PL is where you can find us on Twitter. Silver Bullion SG, Instagram. We're on Instagram as well. Audio only versions can be found on bit.ly slash SBTV iTunes or SBTV Spotify for just the audio only versions and crisis trackers. Excuse me, if you have that Telegram group or that Telegram app, Go ahead and type in um, t.me slash crisis tracker, search crisis tracker, one word. And this is where Vincent and I, we will go ahead and um, we'll post some news items as it pertains to gold, silver, uh, the economy, finance, current events. Uh, pretty interesting things. We, we you know, really do sift to the weeds, try and find out what's important and probably more importantly, try to find out what's what's true. A lot of things out there don't make sense today's. But these are the places you can find us. So I do hope you will definitely look us up. So again, appreciate y'all being here. Upcoming guest, I, he's a pretty interesting guy. I think most of you know him. He's known as Denver Dave. Uh, let me get that graphic up. There you go. Denver Dave Kranzler from investmentresearchdynamics.com. Dave has over 30 years of experience researching and investing in the precious metals markets. And Denver Dave is also a hedge fund manager. He's worked on Wall Street and was a junk bond trader. His mining stocks journal and short sellers journal are two of the go-to subscriptions for investors in the mining sectors and equities. So yes, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you can be notified and thumbs up are always appreciated. And we'll let you know when Denver Dave's um, interview is going to be released. Should be uh, maybe about Wednesday, Thursday coming up this 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 week. That's the time frame we're we're looking at. 
happy to talk to Dave. It should be an interesting chat. So again, moving on, as always, we want to thank you for supporting us. Uh, very important. We want to give away these $10 Amazon gift cards for our winners. Our winners are going to be from people who, who watched that Bill Holter interview, and there were quite a few of you, so I'm, I'm, I'm expecting that we'll definitely hit these five uh, gift cards that we're going to give away. House rules, be one of the first five to answer correctly in this live stream. Before the timer runs out, you're going to have about a minute and 30 seconds. U.S. winners, you're going to be given a link to download that gift card. Non-U.S. winners, uh, if, if you can't um, use or apply that gift card, you'll have to contact Amazon Customer Service, and they're pretty good. They'll, they'll help you out with that. And you're going to have to provide us with an email during this live stream. So before I head on, I want to take a quick look at, at the comments. Out here, um, let's see. Yes, Vincent, absolutely. T.me slash crisis tracker, one word. Definitely join this, this group if you have that Telegram app. Okay, uh, let's see what else is out here. Um, okay, yeah, Dave Kranzer. Everybody knows <laughs> Dave Kranzer. He's pretty active on Twitter. He, he's, he's a funny guy. Um, he does have his pet peeves out there, and he will let you know it. Um, so if, if you can, uh, make sure you follow Dave Kranzler, Investment Research Dynamics on, on Twitter. All right. So moving on to this question, I'm pretty sure a lot of you will get it. I'm hopeful a lot of you will get it. So here we go. Minute and 30 seconds. According to Bill Holter, gold and silver cannot go blank. Okay. So you have about a minute and 30. According to Bill Holter, gold and silver cannot go blank. And no, the word is not higher. I know gold and silver is, is have a have had a pretty rough time, but it's not higher. Okay, I can tell you that much. The word is not higher. So according to Beholder, gold and silver cannot go. And go ahead and, and give it a shot. Give it a guess. So let's see. Um, Bill Wood, will Singapore apply to join BRICS Plus? I have no idea on that. But we'll, we'll see. Time will tell. Let's see, uh, James Seawall, zero. Okay, um, let's see what else is out there. Uh, 495, good point. Uh, down, it's been going down. Uh, Stepa J says zero. Uh, Richard Martin says down. Henry says zero. Uh, Mr. Nguyen says bankrupt. Uh, Harold B, zero, zero. A lot of zeros out there, zero. Uh, let me see. Okay, lots of zeros are out there. All right. Uh, tell you what, let me just let the timer run out and then um, we'll see what happens here. So a lot of guys are saying zero ballistic. You know, it feels like you can't go ballistic sometimes, but I'm pretty sure in time it will. Uh, let's see what else is out there. Okay. All right. So the answer actually is bankrupt. And we only had one guy who got that, Mr. Nguyen. Uh, congratulations, but but we will take zero. We'll take zero. So the winners are going to be Stepa J. Uh, he was the first to to say zero. I'm um, sorry, <clears throat> James Sewell was the first to say zero. So he's one of the winners. And then we also had uh, Stepa J. He was one of the winners as well. Uh, we had also Henry. Henry said zero. And then we had Mr. Nguyen who said bankrupt. That was the real word, bankrupt. And then we had Harold B, who also said zero. So these were the first five to actually go ahead and say either zero or or bankrupt. Let me double check. Yeah, so that's it. Okay, so James Sewell, you're the first one. Congratulations. Sepa J, <clears throat> excuse me. Henry also said zero. Mr. Nguyen, uh, bankrupt. And then Harold B zero. So these are going to be the five. And to make sure we're going to we're going to revisit what <clears throat> excuse me Bill Holter had to say. Excuse me about that, guys. And make sure he did indeed say zero or bankrupt. When credit collapses, that will take the currency with it. All paper assets are going to be destroyed in value. Gold and silver will be the two men left standing because they are real money. They are God's money. They're universally accepted all over the world. They've had value for 5,000 years. And 
man's brilliant stupidity at this point to where we are now is not going to change 5,000 years of history and all of a sudden gold and silver are not worth anything. Think about in a broken down situation, you're a farmer, uh, you have pigs, you have chickens, you produce eggs. Are you really going to take a piece of paper with ink on it for your eggs or do you want something real? I mean, I can tell you, I've talked to farmers here locally and asked, you know, if things get really bad, will you accept silver? And Many times they tell me, I'd rather accept silver now. The world right now is insolvent. And where we're headed forward from here is a global bankruptcy. But gold and silver cannot bankrupt because they have no liability. All they are is proof that labor capital and equipment have already been used to create them. You can't wake up tomorrow morning and find out, oh, my gold ounce, it bankrupted last night. All right, Bill Holter, when credit collapses, it will take currency with it. True, absolutely true. All paper assets will be destroyed. There, There is a common thought that this will happen as well because you want things that are real, absolutely. Gold and silver, last man standing. I believe this to be true, or at least one of the last men that are going to be standing are gold and silver because they are real. We know it to be money. History tells us that it is money. The world is insolvent, is what Bill Holter says. We're seeing that. I mean, I think you've seen a number of um, central banks come out and say, you know, they, they're taking losses right now. And gold and silver are real money, God's money, universally accepted all over the world. So what are your thoughts on this? Gold and silver absolutely do have a long history as being money. And I'd like to see your thoughts. And the only one of the only downside or, or, critis, or uh, a, a, a criticism of, of gold and silver that word <laughs> is that it's not transportable or it's difficult to transport. It's difficult to um, <clears throat> be mobile the, the, the way you need it to be mobile. But these are changing. They're definitely changing. So these these uh, so-called um, the, the hard the hard things with gold and silver to to make it money again, they're being they're being disposed of, you know, they're being taken care of and gold and silver, they're actually looking, looking quite good. So I'll be looking for your, your comments here. I'll move on to something else Bill Holter had to say. I think this is the end game. And when I say the end game, I know when all is said and done, U.S. Treasuries are not going to be the safe haven. You're not going to see interest rates completely collapse. And the reason behind that is there is so much debt now that the U.S. Treasury owes with interest rates where they are now, at 3% on $30 trillion, you're looking at just interest alone of $900 billion. So I think at some point in time, and very likely this year, you're going to see a questioning of the solvency of the U.S. Treasury. There was a story out, I think it was three weeks ago, four weeks ago, that the Fed had lost roughly $350 billion of value on their portfolio. And I think that's another place where there's going to be a, a big questioning before the end of this year. The solvency of these Western central banks is going to come into question. You need to become your own central bank. Become as self-sufficient as you possibly can. Try not to rely on other sources for things. Think about your own protection. You need to think about your own production or procurement of food. When credit goes down, everything shuts down. Absolutely everything. All right, preach on, Bill Holter. Be your own central bank. And this is something we've talked about for a very long time. Be your own central bank. Treasuries are not a safe haven, <laughs> and not so much as they, they once were. Solvency or Western banks will be questioned. We're starting to see that. You know, we, we are really starting to see that, especially with the, the war going on, especially with how uh, commodities, the real things, are looking to be the real types of currency so we'll we'll see how these things unfold when credit shuts down everything shuts down that is true too and that is a big fear of central banks when credit shuts down everything shuts down so again probably the one key takeaway from this is be your own central bank one foot in the financial system one foot out that's probably the best way to go so i'll be looking for your your thoughts on this as well um, again, so congratulations to, to the, the winners. Uh, just to let you know that we do have it here. Mr. Nguyen, James Sebo, Sepa J, Henry, Harold B., congrats. Uh, please email us at 
sbtv at silverbullion.com.sg if this is the first time that you won. And then we'll go ahead and send you the Amazon gift cards after after the, the live stream. All right, so let me see what was uh no, it wasn't a trick question here. Uh, let me see what what uh, what you folks are, are saying here. Nickel, copper, yeah, for sure. I mean, things things that are real are definitely going to have real value as as we move on. Um, okay, so um, yeah, Mr. New, incorrect, and this is something that uh, Steve Saint Angelo preaches, where gold and silver is stored energy, stored energy. All the costs to explore, mine, and refine are included. So that is a stored energy item. So that, that's a great point. Something Steve St. Angelo always talks about. So let's move on to one more clip from Bill Holter. The Fed has no tools left in their toolbox. The Fed has absolutely nothing they can do. This raising of interest rates, in my opinion, is for optics only. They will more than likely raise one more time. I don't think we get through the summer with the Fed continuing to raise. I would bet by September, October, you're going to see the Fed back into quantitative easing, and there's your QE to infinity. All right. Let me just write this down. September, September, October. We'll see what, what happens then. Bill Holter making a pretty bold call there. September, October. We'll see. Fed has no tools in their toolbox. This is something, you know, Vincent and I, we, we talk pretty frequently about. And Vincent, he, he always tells me the only tool the Fed really has is their printer. And Vincent, you're right again. That seems to be the only tool that they have is, is their printer. And they try, they try to throttle the economy with their printing. Print more, pull back. Print more, pull back. So absolutely, they really have no tools in their toolbox. And the Fed will go back to QE by late summer or fall. That's a pretty, pretty darn big turnaround. So I'd like to know your, your thoughts on that. They won't even get out of the year, according to, to Bill Holter. And, and I'm going to show you a chart later where we're already looking at the bond yields inverting. I'll show you a chart there. So maybe, maybe Bill could be right. So let me take a look at a few of these comments here. Um, Okay, uh, let's see. Carrie Ellen Wilder, central bankers don't fight inflation. They cause it. It's a very good point. Very good point. They cause it. All they have to do is to stop printing money. Absolutely. I mean, definitely at least one of the things they have to do, yes, absolutely, is to, is to just kind of stop and, and balance off. And, and this is actually what we're going to get into for the main topic of, of the day where uh, there was a time there was this thing called um, a currency board system. And we're going to take a look at that and, and you're going to see the, the contrast between what that was and where we are today. So that, that's a great point there. So moving on, I want to go to uh, Gerald Salente, his, his uh, Trends Journal, a few topics there. He had his Peace and Freedom Rally, I believe it was today, I believe so. And then we're going to take a look at uh, producer prices rising and then credit card spending falters. So uh, two pretty interesting dynamics there. Gerald's weekly message. This week's cover marks this weekend's Peace and Freedom Rally to be held in Kingston, New York. The mission of the rally organized by Occupy Peace and the Universal Church of Freedom, Peace and Justice is to reverse the negative trends of ongoing wars hatred and destruction and bring peace on earth and goodwill to all. As we have noted, World War III has begun and it will only become official when there is a nuclear exchange. Gerald, wow. Nuclear exchange or some other catastrophic murderous event. The facts are in front of us for all to see. The world is on fire and the politicians and their bureaucratic syndicate are the arsonists this is not overly dramatic. New York is now running PSA ads on ways to avoid nuclear fallout from a potential blast. But despite the risks, there has been zero, none, talk of peace from Washington and the mainstream media. The rally will include some of the finest minds in the movement, including Gerald Salente, the founder of Occupy Peace and the Universal Church of Freedom, Peace and Justice, and the publisher of the Trends Journal. 
Along with Gerald will be Judge Andrew Napolitano, the syndicated legal columnist Scott Ritter, the former U.S. Marine Corps intelligence officer, officer excuse me, Gary Noll, host of Progressive Radio Network, and Philip Giraldi, the former CIA operations officer and current director of the Council for the National Interest. The Peace and Freedom, Fal Peace and Freedom Rally will be held at 2 p.m. on 23 July in Kingston, New York. There is no admission and, of course, food and drink. So it was already held, but, you know, I do hope you had a chance to go. And just to let you know that these events, types of events do come on. Producer prices rise. The prices manufacturers and suppliers charge businesses for their products jumped 11.3% in June, year on year, because of rocketing energy costs, the U.S. Labor Department reported. A June marked the seventh consecutive month of double-digit increases in the U.S. Producer Price Index, or PPI, and notched a slight rise on May's 10.9% gain. On a seasonally adjusted basis, so-called factory gate, all right, factory gate prices added 1.1% in June over May, and the core PPI, which excludes energy costs, rose 6.4% year over year, its slightest increase since October 2021, the Wall Street Journal said, attributing the slowing pace to some clearings of clogged supply chains. Yet consumer prices rose 9.1% in June, according to the Labor Department. Key to remember here, the key to remember here is inflation. All right, remember inflation. Credit card spending falters. U.S. credit card holders charged 0.4% less to their credit cards in June compared to July, the second consecutive month of decline, according to internal data reported by Barclays. At Barclays, they records, or their records indicate that credit card use at gas stations spiked while consumers cut back on buying cars, general merchandise, and spending on health care. A recent data suggests that the U.S. consumer might be starting to pull back on spending, Barclays analysts wrote in an 11 July research note, which has led us to question if a sharper slowdown in consumer spending is around the corner. The Bank of America said its cardholders added 0.3% to their balances last month, but added that skyrocketing gasoline prices pose a risk that a real consumer spending decline uh, for a second consecutive month in June, the bank's analysts noted in an 11 July report. Consumer spending accounts for as much as 70%, 70% of the U.S. economy. That's a big number. Keys to remember here, economy slowing down and inflation, the definition of stagflation. And this is why we say saddle up and silver up. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to move on to um, our website, silverbullion.com.sg. Hang on, let me just make sure. Okay, so we'll move on to our website and want to take a look at uh, the silver and gold prices this morning here in Asia. Let me just go ahead and refresh this here. Okay, so we're seeing uh, silver down a little, 1861. It was a little bit uh, more down just a little while ago, so it uh, looks like it's it's coming back up a bit. Gold, a little bit down at 1723. Platinum, platinum, which was once more than gold, is at 879. It's roughly half the price of gold. Uh, so this one really makes you wonder if it's a good time to also buy platinum. Remember, platinum was more than, than gold before. And again, if you if you uh, English is not your first language, we do have a variety of languages that you can contact us in. So go ahead and just click on here. An email will pop up, and you can go ahead and uh, contact us through through email in a different language uh, if if you need to. We're updating the the kit, um, so hang on with with that. And uh, silver to gold ratio ninety two point six. Um, it, it's Still continuing to climb just a little bit, 92.6. This kind of tells you that if you are on the fence between buying gold and silver, it may be a better time to buy silver since silver is undervalued, 
undervalued compared to gold. Let me come back up here. We do have a few promotions going on. Uh, $1.50 above spot for Nadir 100 ounce bars, Johnson Matthew 100 ounce bars, and Canadian maples, gold maples, various years are at $40 above spot. So let me just go ahead and take a look at these real quick. Um, okay, so these are the prices in, in USD. Uh, 2011 for a 100 ounce bar, silver bar, and then the Canadian maples. Unfortunately, they are the special anyway is, is out of stock right now. They were 1763 um, on, on, on ounce to buy a gold maple. So those are pretty good. With the silver bars, again, you can pick them up from the shop. We have 63 or you can go ahead and store it in the vault. What you would have to do is sign up as a silver bullion user. And you have six types of account, personal, joint, trust, joint account with the miner, a business account, and a retirement account uh, or a precious metals IRA account. You can also you can also open one up here with us. And uh, the easiest one, the simple, the simplest one is a personal account. Basically, it's just your, your basic information. Uh, you would need some form of ID, fill out the application. And then you can go ahead and just let us know that you found out about us on YouTube. That helps us out. And newsletters, we, we don't really, you know, bombard you with newsletters. They're, they're, um, they're spaced out and they are pretty informative. So you may want to check that. And you may also want to check this uh, customer notifications via encrypted secure notification. What it means is when we send an email to you, all it says is you have a notification from us. Nothing is written in the body of that email. We all know how algos are getting nowadays. So this is again to add another layer of privacy for you. Moving on to Twitter. Some things I bookmarked. Fangs 2.0. Remember, Fangs was such a big word. Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. Well, we're into Fangs 2.0 now, according to Bank of America or Merrill Lynch, where they published their Capital Market Outlook letter. The new Fangs 2.0, they're looking at fuels, aerospace, agriculture, nuclear and renewables, gold, gold and metals, minerals. So there you go. Fangs 2.0. Keep an eye on this. Definitely keep an eye on this. Position yourself right or else Blackstone. Blackstone is preparing to snap up real estate when homeowners start to get underwater. Remember Blackstone, the, the Fed kind of uh, gave them, let's just say uh, loosely uh, gave them some money when things were really down. And this is what they go ahead and, and, and did. Remember, we, we talked about this before where we were seeing corporate buying up homes by the zip code and this is what it's eventually going to come down to when people really start to get underwater these these companies are really going to snap up snap up the homes uh, once this really starts to to unfold david morgan fed carrying 330 billion in unrealized losses on its assets according to q1 financial statements so even the fed the Fed is, is feeling the pinch. Maybe they might have to lay off a few guys. That, that might be pretty good. Fed should be laying off some guys. There you go. Wall Street Silver posted that uh, the new president of Sri Lanka is a member of the World Economic Forum. Well, how do you like that? <laughs> okay, I won't go into that. You can, you can kind of think about that one on your own. This one here, I'm not going to play the music because copyright issues, but these guys are just having fun and i posted this because we all got to have some fun let's just start from the beginning splash us is what they are saying go ahead and splash us so as the cars go by you know they would oblige most of them would oblige and these guys would just have some fun getting splashed by these cars so um i don't know it was nice for me to see just some people having fun in a world that seems to be going crazy. Rob Schneider posting what was going on in uh, Rome, I believe, where people are very, very unhappy. The farmers among them, uh, mass protesters against the Great Reset, radical environmental policies. Uh, Charlie Bellello, two years ago, the 30-year mortgage was at 2.90. 
2.5%, and the median existing home price was 294k. Today, a 30-year mortgage rate is 5.7%, and the median median existing home price is 416k. With the 20% down payment, that's a 90% increase in the monthly payment from 978 to where to go to 1,933. And remember last month or, or last week, we uh, put up a Gerald Salente article, uh, pay rent and go broke. And this is what he was talking about. The numbers aren't lying. They're very, very true. Speaking about lying, an ex JP Morgan gold trader said his boss coached him to lie about price manipulation orders and later advised him not to plead guilty as prosecutors were preparing criminal charges against top executives. Okay. <laughs> JP Morgan still still going at it. Uh this one here, you know, I mean think what you think what you may about it. These apparently are the new quarters that are coming out in the US. Let me just open up this picture. So go ahead and and see the difference. 2021 quarter, 2022 quarter, and what some people are saying is is besides the image of George Washington, um it's the in God we trust. Um it's the in God we trust item here. Before Washington was looking at it or he was looking to it. And now he turned his back on it. So a lot of people, they're really upset. You know, to some people, it doesn't mean anything. But to others, this really means something where Washington now has turned his back on the motto. So something to keep an eye on if it's going to light a fire. And uh, Wall Street Silver Agenda 2030 now fully ratified between Klaus Swabs, WEF, and the United Nations. For those of you who thought this was some type of conspiracy, uh, here you go. Areas of I'll go ahead and play This it afternoon, for you. the Secretary General and Klaus Schwab, the founder of the World Economic Forum, will, sign, will witness the signing of a memorandum of understanding on a strategic partnership between the UN and the World Economic Forum, which outlines areas of cooperation to deepen engagement between the two institutions and to jointly accelerate the implementation of the 2030 agenda. This afternoon, the Secretary General... All right, so there you go. Um, it is real. This 2030 agenda is definitely real. And this is something to keep an eye on as well. Uh, James Melville, absolutely nothing to see here at all. Apply for a lump sum payment to leave or retire from farming. Check if you're eligible for the lump sum exit scheme, what you need to do and how to apply. And this is was for this was for farmers in the UK where apparently they're being offered a lump sum to retire. So if you if you're in the UK or you know more about this, uh, go ahead and and chime in. Uh, this is I, I think somewhat significant. And uh, Dave Kranzler he he did a interview prior where the Fed has no choice but to return to printing more money, and we will we will ask him. Uh, just about that in the interview with Dave Kranzler coming ahead. So a lot kind of going on. Uh, let me take a look at a few of these these comments here. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, JW in, in Japan. You always got great comments. Appreciate that. I'm not sure if BlackRock wants to own a lot of non, non-performing assets. They, go, they got into residential real estate because there is income. What that income or when that income goes away they will get out. So, okay, I would not disagree at all with that. That's a, that's a good comment there. Harold B., I agree with JWF. <laughs> I do too. Uh, let's see what else is out here. Um, 495, 130 plus countries have civil unrest according to Crisis Tracker site. There is a lot. Um, I was thinking of, of doing a live stream on that, but there's a lot. There's there's quite a bit. Um, the items, uh, the reasons why are diverse, but a lot of them do have to do with inflation and energy. So we we are seeing uh, these things definitely unfolding, and unfortunately, people are feeling it. They are feeling it. They they really are in some cases suffering from it. So again, uh, appreciate the comments here, Bill Wood. You know what? That that's a great uh 
That's a great question. Maybe we should call the mint and, and find out. Will field harmonics become scarce due to power rationing in Germany? Maybe. Uh, field harmonics, uh, they're minted in, in Austria, but hey, right, it's next door. So we'll, we'll see what, you know, if anything will, will become of that. All right. So moving on, um, you know, I want to take a look at something before we get to the topic of the day. And, and, and I, I will try to make this a weekly thing. The inflation treasury check. OK, so the CPI is the consumer price index. It measures inflation. The yield curve below shows the duration and interest rate of bonds. Now, the key points about the yield curve inclining to the right expectations are good. Uh, well, flat means expectations aren't really that good and inverted means we're kind of in trouble, maybe headed toward a recession. So from January, February, you can see we still have that incline to the right. March, we can see it starting to flatten out a bit. April, we can see the lower end, the six month, one year kind of creeping up. May is the same. They're creeping up, definitely flattening out. June, we had that report come in at 9.1% inflation. And July, where we are today, you can definitely see that one year to the 10 year inverting. You can see where the one year is actually more or higher than the 10 year. So that is a graphical representation of what's going on with the bond yields when you hear about yields are flattening and inverting. All right, so moving on, we're going to get to the main topic of the day. Excerpts of Dr. Go Ken Sui from the book Resilience, Dynamism, Trust, 50 Landmark Statements by MAS Leaders. MAS is an abbreviation for Monetary Authority of Singapore. And the question here, or what Dr. Go King Sui brought up, or not a question, but statements from him was, you know, is a, basically he was still looking at a currency board system. And so the question I want to ask is, is a currency board system a better way than the current popular central bank way? Right. And again, all credit to Vincent. Vincent was reading this. And then one day at lunch, he told me, hey, you, you know, it, this is pretty interesting. I, I took a look at it. And yes, it was. So we thought to share it with you. Dr. Go King Sui, he was the MAS chairman from October 1980 to January 1985. And he was the MAS managing director January 1985 to April 1985. Dr. Goh was among the most important members of Singapore's founding generation of leaders. He played a critical role as Minister of Finance in the crucial early years from 1959 to 1965 and from 1967 to 1970, laying the groundwork for Singapore's subsequent economic development. When Dr. Goh took the helm to help steer Singapore's economic environment and the future of it, Singapore was in a very, very unique position. You see, Singapore was the only independent state to issue its currency under the currency board system or CBS. Now, what's a currency board system? And Vincent, chime in anytime you 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 would like to. So what what is a currency board system? A currency board is an extreme, an extreme form of a peg exchange rate management of the exchange rate, and the money supply. Now, check this out. Management of the exchange rate and the money supply are taken away from the nation's central bank if it has one. Now, in addition to a fixed exchange rate, a currency board is also generally required to maintain reserves of the underlying foreign currency. So this is pretty big already. It's very, very different from what we see today. Again, management of the exchange rate and the money supply are taken away from the nation's central bank if it has one. Now, keep in mind, Singapore was for a time a British colony, and the currencies of British colonies were issued under this CBS, or currency board system. Now, this provided for 100, 100% backing of the note issued in overseas reserves namely sterling deposits in London. Now, this allowed the automatic conversion of the local currency into the British pound. So everything was basically 
that. Now, the currency board system served both sides reasonably well. Now, since the 19th century up to about 1929, the pound sterling was the preeminent world currency. The colonies had stable currencies, meaning that the rampant inflation observed today in many ex-colonies did not occur. And the British enjoyed substantial inflows of capital from their empire, and this helped to make London the world's leading financial center. The currency board system in the post-war years saw rapid decolonization taking place, and in every instance, the newly independent state established a central bank with note-issuing powers. So here's the change. The requirements of 100% backing in overseas assets was abolished. However, Singapore, Singapore stood out as the sole exception. The Singapore retained the currency board system, and when the Monetary Authority of Singapore was set up in 1970, it performed all functions of a central bank except for note issuing powers. Okay, except for note issuing powers. How and why did Singapore preserve such a strange anachronism, if that's the word, in this age of electronic finance? The decision to proceed along these exceptional lines was a collective decision of the cabinet, Singapore's cabinet. Now, each member reached this decision in his own way, and Dr. Go will explain his in Dr. Go's words. When I was studying economics at Raffles College in pre-war days, the Keynesian Revolution broke out with the publication of John Keynes' The General Theory of Employment, Interest, and Money. Today, critics, including Sir John Hicks, uh, they are agreed in that it was a badly written work and made for difficult reading. I can attest to the latter. As an undergraduate, I read the book from cover to cover no fewer than three times some chapters even more. And years later, the truth, the truth dawned on me. The Keynesian remedy for curing unemployment, the burning issue of the day left behind the Great Depression years, it involved a serious risk of inflation. Of course, Keynes knew this. Of course, Keynes knew this. The remedy he recommended took the form of expansion of bank credit through central bank policies to finance government expenditure. Now, this extra spending will create additional demand for goods and services, thereby reducing unemployment. But if economic variables are measured in wage units, inflation would be factored out as wages will rise in keeping with price increases. And this was something we had talked about last week when wages rise. Price or, or prices on goods, they, they are increasing, which is why wages will, will increase as well. Anyway, if variables such as the consumer price index or interest rates and aggregates like money supply were measured in wage units, their increases would be reduced to the extent to which wages rise. And there is further difficulty to contend with. The Keynesian system is a closed one. That is, it takes no account of foreign trade. And this is admissible in theory, but in practice, since all modern states engage in foreign trade, the Keynesian stimulus will lead eventually to balance of payments deficits if governments do not exercise restraint in time. So very, very wise and visionary words. Uh, Keynesian stimulus will lead eventually to balance of payments deficits if governments do not exercise restraint in time. Dr. Goh, he, he already saw it and knew it. A part of the increased incomes people receive will be spent on imports, and when exports do not increase in proportion, a trade deficit will occur. A trade deficit will occur. And uh, just to chime in, as Vincent says, this material came from Dr. Goh's speech in 1992, and it came from the, uh, the, the PDF that I showed earlier. I'll go ahead and, and get the name for it so you can all have the references. You can all have the references there. 
All right, so a trade deficit will occur. Now, in the immediate post wars or post war years, Keynesian economics won widespread acceptance in both academic and government circles in Britain and the U.S. Confidence increased in the ability of governments to maintain full employment and stable economic growth through central bank credit policies and government fiscal or budgetary policies. However, by the mid-1960s, certain stubborn difficulties appeared and refused to go away. In Britain, this took the form of balance of payments troubles, which led to the devaluation, the devaluation of the pound in November of 1967. All right, devaluation. America also experienced troubles in a different form because all major world currencies fixed their par values in terms of the U.S. dollar, and the U.S. dollar was pegged to gold at $35 per ounce. America or the U.S. could not devalue the dollar except by raising the price of gold, and this the government was unwilling to do for political reasons. We've gone over this previous in live streams as well. The government was unwilling to do it for political reasons. Now, eventually, what happened was an increase in inflationary pressure in the U.S., and a decline in confidence over the convertibility of the U.S. dollar into gold at $35 per ounce because of increasing U.S. dollar balances accumulated overseas as a result of trade deficits. All right, trade deficits. Now, in the end, gold convertibility of the U.S. dollar was suspended in August of 71, and shortly thereafter, the regime of floating currencies came into being. World currencies continue to float till this day. My cabinet colleagues took careful note of these dramatic events as they unfolded on the world's financial scene. And none of us believed that Keynesian economic policies could serve as Singapore's guide to economic well-being. Our economy was and is both small and open Financing budget deficits through central bank credit creation appeared to us as an invitation, an invitation to disaster. Again, prophetic words from Dr. Go. Another contributing factor was the world outlook of my colleagues, the old guard, as they are now called. We all grew up under difficult conditions and did not believe anybody owed Singapore a living. The way to a better life was through hard work, first in schools, then in universities or polytechnics, and then on the job, in the workplace. Diligence, education, and skills will create wealth, not central bank credit. Not central bank credit. For you older guys out there who did grow up in, let's just say in the U.S., these words probably strike very, very true to you. It was how you grew up as well um, days gone by but these are days gone by now so diligence education and skills will create wealth not central bank credit against this background of leadership thinking it's hardly surprising that the currency board system was preserved with its legal requirement to back the currency note issue with at least 100 percent of overseas assets now, three critical things must be known is what Dr. Goh says. First, we want to inform the financial world that our objective was to maintain a strong convertible Singapore dollar. And this remains the best protection against inflation when nearly two-thirds of our citizens' expenditure is spent on imported goods. A strong Singapore dollar helps to keep consumer prices down. Also, second, was to inform our citizens that if they wanted more and better services, they have to pay for it. They have to pay for it through taxes and fees. There is no free lunch. No free lunch. The third, we wanted to indicate to academics, both local and foreign, that what is fashionable in the West is not necessarily good for Singapore. A perceptive mind is needed to distinguish the peripheral from the fundamental transient fads from 
permanent values. Okay, very true. Now, when MAS was set up, the chairman was by law the finance minister. And World Bank experts advised us against this. Okay, this is interesting here. Since the Monetary Authority of Singapore was effectively a central bank, the chairman should be an independent person with sufficient authority, sufficient authority to resist a financial minister's request for money to finance a budget deficit. The World Bank believed that putting the finance minister in charge would be like asking a cat to look after the fish. But Singapore has always worked on the principle that government expenditure on education, defense, social and economic services, etc., must be paid for out of government revenues, taxes, and fees. And this is a key difference. It's the finance minister's prime duty to balance the budget and, if possible, accumulate a surplus for the rainy day. Successive finance ministers have been doing this. They do not need an independent central bank governor to persuade them not to run budget deficits. The World Bank's anxieties were misplaced. And dramatically, elected governments the world over are exposed to the temptation of winning votes through promising better and cheaper services and at the same time, lower taxes. And this has happened not only in rich countries, but also in poor developing countries. And we see this all the time, pandering, 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 free stuff all the time when it comes to, to politics, right? In Singapore, an irresponsible government does not need a central bank to finance lavish spending as a means to win popularity. We have substantial overseas reserves which can serve this purpose. If the electorate misled by soft-headed opinion makers persists in wanting the good life without working for it, constitutional safeguards cannot stop foolish behavior for all times. All right, we get that? Constitutional safeguards cannot stop foolish behavior for all times. What will happen if the electorate chooses this option is that after a brief period of high living, Singapore will spiral downwards and eventually become another miserable developing country. The Great Depression, which started in 29, was the result of grave mismanagement by governments and central banks of Europe and the U.S. It was in response to the wrong policies of that period that Keynes created his new system of economic analysis. If one has to follow Keynes on any point, it would be the title of his book. This should have been the special theory of employment, interest, and money. His prescriptions were intended to address, <clears throat> to address excuse me, the special circumstances created by the Great Depression. By calling it a general theory, he led lesser minds than his into believing that his prescriptions could be applied under all circumstances with unhappy consequences, as we have noted. Just to finish up here, Dr. Go Kang Sui, this is what he says as well. We in Singapore believe in hard work. We believe that enterprise should be rewarded and not penalized. We believe that we must adjust ourselves to changing situations. We believe in seizing economic opportunities and not let them go past us. And finally, we believe in self-reliance. These are human qualities that have helped to transform an island swamp into a thriving metropolis. And they are the traditional virtues of Singaporeans. And so long as we retain these virtues, we can face the future with confidence. Huge words. Uh, very, very big words. Let me just uh, make sure I'm on the, the right place here. Yeah, okay. So a currency board system, it, it, it took away the, the ability of a central bank to print notes. Um, could we bring it back? That, that, that's, that's a question. Um, is it too far gone? Uh, printing notes is a big reason why we we are where we are today. Seeing things like inflation, uh, stagflation possibly coming up. So, um, you know, these were 
you know, Dr. Dr. Go had a, a lot of prophetic words here. And when Vincent, you know, we were having lunch and, and he told me about it and he was reading me some of it. You know, it, it was difficult. I admit it was difficult for me to hear because these things that he was saying reminded me of, of a country that once was and how far it's removed from these types of things, you know, the, these, the values, the integrity, things like that. So as he was, you know, Vincent was reading it to me, you know, on one hand, there's hope, you know, things can be, there, there are better ways, there are good ways, there's hope. And on the other hand, you realize there may not, I mean, I wish there were hope for all, but, you know, countries make decisions on which way they want to move. People make decisions on which way they want to move. And sometimes, you know, when you move, sometimes you move away from that hope, you know? So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a rough thing to hear at the same time. But anyway, those are my personal thoughts. Vincent, I appreciate you sharing that with me and, and, and you know, us being able to, to share it with, with people, uh, the good people here. Uh, I can tell you, being in Singapore for almost 20 years, I, I have never seen a more responsible government. And I'm not trying to sell Singapore. I'm, I'm just being honest with you. I've never seen a more responsible government. Uh, you know, there's a lot of virtue here. Um, you know, it's, you know, I mean, like any country, you know, good and bad and things like that. But in general, uh, they're doing it right. You know, they are doing it right. Uh, absolutely. So, uh, David Bagley, um, you're welcome. Uh, let me just take a look at a, at a few comments here. Um, Vincent, chime in if, if you want. It's, it's your country's history. And um, uh, it, it's, uh, I'm, I'm glad that you were able to share it with me. And, and again, for, for me to share it with, with the rest of the people out here. Um, so let me see what else is out there. We're, we're going to move on to the, the commentary portion here, but I just want to make sure that I touch base with you guys. Um, let's see what else is out here. Um, hang on. So let me take a, take a look at a few of the, the comments here. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Nguyen, Singapore finance minister needs to replace Jerome Powell. Well, you know, the Fed is in debt, right? So maybe uh, maybe Jerome will have to lay himself off at, at, at some point, right? <laughs> Who knows? Uh, let's see what else is out here. Um, okay. Um, sorry, I'm just scrolling through, through the comments here. Uh, okay. All right. Um, very diverse. Very diverse. But again, as always, guys, the, the one thing I want to stress out or I want to stress here is there are new people. And there are, you know, people who are sensing inflation, seeing inflation, and they are hearing things about gold. And these are new people. OK, your comments. And I said this before, they mean any they mean much more than anything that that I could ever say. So if, if you could always try to help people remember, be a blessing, not not a burden. I'll move on to the comment section here. You know, as in almost everything, we need to look back in the past when we are making mistakes, when we are making mistakes in the present and possibly damning ourselves in the future. But Dr. Goh got it right. He knew that success was not quick. It wasn't easy. And it involved work. It's not a handout. But we also knew, or what he also knew, is prosperity does not come from printing. He knew this way back then in the 60s and 70s. Prosperity does not come from printing. He understood that a currency needed to be backed. Central banks, governments, politicians, institutions today, they all know this. They all know this as well. Perhaps you and I also know this as well. But looking back to correct present mistakes, a few things stand out that need to be at the core of both policies and people. Honesty, integrity, trust, to name a few. Things that Dr. Go King Sui was made of. Okay. And the amazing thing here is that if we find these qualities in people, we will find those qualities in the money that people prefer to use. Sound people, sound money. Gold is that sound money. Silver is that sound money. So when you see and understand where we are in history, you know it's time to go home and go back to gold and silver. We can try as we might, but the reality is there's nothing new under the sun. But don't let the cost of mistakes today become the debt of your future. 
So that'll wrap up what I have to say. I'll take a look at, again at a few more things that, that you had to say. Um, let me see what else is out here. Uh, okay. Um, Vincent, separation of powers sounds nice, but today Yellen was Fed chair and now the Treasury secretary. The dog was a cat and now guarding another cat. Absolutely. And and this is when, you know, the, the World Bank had, had criticized, you know, Dr. Go um, when he, he had his uh, currency board system, you know, ideology in mind. Um, he knew, you know, he, he knew that there had to be a separation. Let me take a look at another thing that Vincent is saying here. You know, Dr. Go's point was that having the right people in government was more important. Separation of powers does not do much if the cat and dog are in cahoots to get to get the fish. It's a good point. And sadly, this is what we're seeing. Uh, politicians and, and central banks, you know, creating favors for each other. They're the ones gaining. I, I'm not gaining anything from this. And I know 99.999% of you out there. You're not gaining anything else from you're not gaining anything from from this as, as well. And you know, I, I I hope we can turn it around. I, I wish we could turn it around. Uh, but these are how empires fall. You know, it, it pains me to say that. Uh, you guys know I'm from I'm from the US as well, but it pains me to say that, but it is true. These are the things that that uh, cause empires to fall. We're seeing it. Uh, we're seeing it in, in real time. Um, Vincent also chiming in and saying that uh, when I read Dr. Goh's 1992 speech, the hairs on my hands stood up. He essentially described the problems we see today. There is nothing new under the sun. Absolutely. And and that's the whole point of this. That That is the whole point of this. Um, we got to get back to that. And And if your government won't get back to it, you have to get back to it. Do the best you can to get back to it as 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 an individual. The honesty, trust, integrity, having principles, morals, values. And like I said, when you have people who believe in this, a lot of times these are the people that want money that have those same qualities. Things like gold, things like silver. Um, so again, um, all right, looks like the comments are, are, are okay here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Lieutenant Colonel, absolutely. Um, always remember, do the right thing even when no one is watching. Okay, do the right thing even when no one is watching. That is what the definition of character is. Even when no one is watching, you are still upholding your, your integrity, your character. We can't have enough of it. We cannot have enough integrity and character today. So I'm depending on you guys, and if you're depending on me, I will also do my best to uphold that for you. And I know Vincent, he upholds it as as well. Uh, he's he's a good measuring stick. So Vincent, I appreciate you. Appreciate you, brother. Okay, so I guess that, that'll wrap it up. Otherwise, I'm, I'm just going to yodel on and on and on. So, you know, again, as always, be a blessing, not a burden. Um, hey, Vincent, if we if we can, do you have uh, that, that link for that, that book, the, the MAS book? Um, I'll, I'll wait to see your, your answer, yes or no, or <clears throat> if, if you have a, a link to it. Or or if not, um, maybe we'll try and take a look at more items in, in that book and share it with, with people. Um, yes, Mr. Nguyen, uh, at the end of the day, if you can answer to integrity, you'll sleep well. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I'm sure we all like to live our life looking forward. We don't like to live our life looking over our shoulder in the back. Our, over our, our back. So again, um, appreciate it. I'll just wait for uh, Vincent to to chime in. Um, if not, it's okay. We'll, we'll put it in the community group if we can uh, go ahead and, and find that link. So again, I appreciate you guys being here. Be a blessing, not a burden. Uh, stay on top of uh, stay on top of current events. Okay, so Vincent says he'll, he'll put it in, in the description uh, down below a bit later. Stay ahead of current events. Keep your head on a swivel. There are a lot of things that we, we have to watch, including our ourselves. Probably the most important thing we have to watch is ourselves and keep that integrity. So with that, again, be a blessing, not a burden. I'll see you guys next week. And as always, saddle up for what's coming ahead. 
and Silver up as well. Appreciate you being here. I'll see you guys next week.